What's up, Reapers? Welcome back to the crypt. Um, I did my CD collection part 12. Um, no, this is not 13. Um, I'm probably gonna do that this weekend. Um, no, this is going to be a bit of a different, um, thing. Um, I know I did a video on my musical journey, and, uh, the first one I deleted, and I think I have the second one up still, I might actually redo that again, because I feel like I messed up on parts, and I wasn't as, uh, I wasn't thinking about a lot of stuff, but this is part of that musical journey, and that is how death metal, deathcore, and metalcore specifically got me through high school. And um, there will be some things that are trauma mentioning, but I'm not going to go ahead and say, oh yeah, well, here's my trauma, deal with it. Um, but this is a warning that if something like this happened to you, uh, Please talk to someone about it. I didn't want to. I bottled it up for years. I regret that. Um, but basically, around 10th ish grade, I was going through some shit and I was listening to a lot of suicidal tendencies and thrash metal like Megadeth. Uh, I was starting to get in Slayer more. Um, I just found like Celtic Frost. Uh, or no, I haven't found Celtic Frost yet. But I just found a band by the name of Creator, and this is important to uh, the story. And specifically, it was their album. Gods of Violence, and this is actually still the one of the first CDs I bought that, uh, yeah, like this is the same disc, um, I mean, it's in pretty good condition for how many times I spun it, and I specifically remember listening to Satan is Real, and that kind of stirred me on this rabbit hole. Uh, that is my musical journey. Now, keep in mind that I had no idea what Black and Thrash was. I didn't know what a lot of thrash and death metal was. All I knew is that I liked the melodic parts. I liked how harsh it was. Uh, because to me, you know, the, uh, screams and whatnot were so new. And then, a few months later, during COVID, I was watching a video that was the 10 most brutal songs on planet Earth by everyone's favorite, uh, website, Loudwire. Uh, aka, uh, the people who like to suck off Corey Taylor. Now... The thing about that is, um, this is real. This is, yeah, um, is I was listening to the song Hammer Smash Face, which is what got me into death metal. Now, I had heard death before, and I've said this before that I consider Cannibal Corpse my introduction to death metal as it was the band that really stuck out for me. Um, so, um, I know some people will say that makes no sense, but whatever. I'm not here to please you. Um, but getting back to my story, I had bought 
the album to my mutilated because I loved the song Hammer Smash Face. And so, of course, as soon as it came in, I popped it in. And, the <laughs> da, 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 you know, I was just headbanging and whatnot. And, um, you know, my parents could see that I was really enjoying it. So they kind of let it slide. And... You know, a few months go by and I start finding, like, slam and black metal and whatnot. And, you know, I kind of dabble in it. But, you know, it's Suicide Tendencies Creator and Cannibal Corpse that are all on repeat. And, you know, I was watching, like, j Hoff films, Black Metal Werewolf, Kill Mountain Gore Gore Attack. I still watch uh, Black Metal Werewolf and... Uh, Killbot, uh, mostly Killbot. j Hoff films, I'll sometimes do that. Um, if I'm, like, really, like, oh, yeah, I want to be in that, like, thrash metal mood, but for the most part, it's those band, and I pretty much went, like, okay, I'm gonna listen to what they say is okay, and, um, you know, I really didn't uh and i think you can tell from my older videos i didn't really let my own personal taste in but i do remember it was shortly after my first breakup which was like a 13 month relationship so you can tell that i was really uh hurt um until i realized just how poorly she treated me and that was when I had started really listening to the album Ascendancy by Trivium. Now, Trivium I had been listening to, and of course I had the CD um, somewhere. I have my Trivium CDs. Um, Here it is. And this is actually the two disc special edition because it had the cover of Master of Puppets. And this and again, these are all CDs that I've bought before, so I haven't replaced any. Um there you go. And I remember listening to this after that breakup along with a bunch of pantera now pantera i had heard obviously before but i started listening to like vulgar display of power and cowboys from hell specifically due to a friend named yash that i had met through instagram on one of my old accounts um i have no idea where he is now um i know like last time i saw he had like deleted his account um, I kind of miss his, uh, combos. We were supposed to call on Discord, but never did. Um, it sucks. But, uh, you know, he was one of the truest friends I ever had, so. Um, I thank him for helping me through some shit. But I remember I was listening to Trivium's Ascendancy album. And... When the song, I think, was Suffocating Sight, which was one of Yash's favorites. Um, no, we were just kind of talking about the songs, and I was like, oh, shit, that's really good. And he introduced me to a band called Suicide. Or no, sorry, I'm missing, I'm missing, I'm messing up, excuse me. Um, he had mentioned a band called Infant Annihilator, and I didn't think much of it, but I was kind of listening to Cannibal Corpse and whatnot on YouTube on my Xbox, you know, because it was, like, summer, and, you know, I didn't have much going on. I didn't have many friends growing up, and my one friend that I did have um, just was busy, so I was like, all right. And this song called Soil the Stillborn came up. And I'm like, all right, you got a really edgy name, but I need to hear this. And as soon as I heard the, 
of still wearing that fucking drum butt uh, part with the fucking uh fucking guitar and then the scream which I cannot fucking scream for the life of me I can do some growls but that's about it um <laughs> you know I was like oh shit that's why he suggested them because I was blown away, and I have somewhere, I have the fucking CD, but I bought that CD specifically for So It Was Stillborn, and I remember hearing, like, Motherless Miscarriage, Unholy Grave Birth, uh, fucking Blasphemian, and I remember just thinking, what the fuck is this? This is so technical, this is so heavy. And that's how I found Suicide Silence, with their song, You Only Live Once. And for months, I would listen to that song over and over. And of course, again, I would buy The Black Crown. And I remember hearing You Only Live Once, and, you know, I would just listen to that song over and over again. And for a while, you know, I would just listen to, like, Suicide Silence and Trivium creator, suicidal tendencies, but I would only listen to the songs that I knew, uh, that I liked, um, because, you know, at the time, to me, I was like, oh, buy the album so I can listen to this, so when they're, when they're on TV and I don't have my headphones, I can just spin this, um, the fucking logic, you know, I'm, I was a kid, but, uh, you know, I remember I would listen to it in school and teachers would look at me like, are you good? But then I remember hearing the song unanswered. And, um, of course, I'm like, holy shit, this is even heavier. So I then had my dad order the cleansing for me. Now, of course, at this point, I had like Exodus and no, because I had, like, Fabulous Disaster, I had, um, no, I had a few CDs, but I didn't have what I have now, and I didn't know what I knew now, but I do remember loving the ever-loving shit out of this, I remember listening to, like, No Pity for a Coward, and then I found Whitechapel, and my god, those first few albums, man, the first three Whitechapel albums will probably always be my favorite of their discography, especially the third one, A New Era of Corruption, having breeding violence and reprogrammed to hate. And I don't know why it took so long, but I remember I was listening to This Is Exile, The Somatic Defilement, and a new era of corruption quite often on my phone and one day someone looked over and was like wow you like a lot of screamo which i kind of glared at her because i was like it's death metal because i didn't know what deathcore was at that time but you know once i started learning about the things i was like oh it's core but i kind of dig it I kind of dropped that whole elitist mindset. And I found one of my favorite. And, you know, I was listening to, like, Lamb of God. And I was listening to... Uh, these two albums. Uh, Ashes of the Wake and fucking Sacrament. You know, and I remember hearing Late to Rest and... Uh, Now you've got something to die for and walk with me in hell, redneck, more time to kill. And of course, I would listen to these albums and whatnot. And this was at a time where I was dating someone 
who, and I'm not going to get too deep into it, lied about her fucking age. Um, thankfully, I was 17, and it wasn't um, in person. But, yeah, the internet is definitely not a easy place to date. Don't do it. It, yeah, all I'm going to say. Um, for those who know, know, the others who don't know, probably won't, um, just due to the fact that it's hard for me to talk about, um, and I have trouble, uh, trusting, but regardless, I was 17 and we were dating and I remember at that time I was starting to listen to a lot of Celtic Cross. Um, I was still huge into Metallica. I was still huge into Megadeth, but I was listening to Unearth the March, which is one of my favorite metalcore albums ever. And I remember listening to Grave uh Grave Opportunity. I believe it's the track. Grave of Opportunity, excuse me. And, um, I was just like, man, I like how melodic this is. Um, but this is an album that, you know, really means a lot to me, more than, uh, I can say. And, uh, I don't like being that person that's like, oh... You know, this band saved me or whatever. But, you know, I listened, I started listening to, like, Bullet for My Valentine. Um, I was listening to fucking Revenge, Possessed, um, Hemorrhage. Uh, and I even started listening to Hatebreed, uh, shortly after that rela relationship. And... You know, those were bands that I listened to throughout uh, 12th grade. And, um, yeah, that was a really emotional roller coaster. But I, I also started listening to Cal Decapitation. And I remember listening, like, I would listen to, like, Suffocation, Cal Decap, uh, and I was also listening to a lot of Dying Fetus and Aborted. Um, now, I'm not trying to just name off bands to name off bands. These are all bands I very much did listen to. And I remember um, a lot of these bands would um, st stick with me. But one band in particular, really stood out to me with my anger towards the girl um, that I just kind of briefly talked about, that being the Acacia, the Acacia Strain with The Dead Walk. That album was a album that I listened to religiously. It was Honors, The March, The Cleansing by Suicide Silence, and the dead walk by the acacia strain. Um, man, what a fucking album! I remember listening to a bunch of this stuff, and you know, I was just like, oh my god, I need heavier, heavier. I found ingested, I found within destruction, I found fucking. Uh, you know, I was starting to listen to a lot of punk, so I listened to, like, Discharge. I listened to the Sex Pistols. I listened to Bikini Kill and, um, you know, Immolation, Hooded Menace, you know, Hatebreed, obviously, I just mentioned. And I was also starting to listen to some more new metal. And as I said in my CD collection, part 12, 
I was listening to Dope a lot in ninth grade, and I ended up listening to them again um, for nostalgia's sake, and I still do. Um, obviously, a lot of these bands have still been being put, have still been played and whatnot, and this was also around the time I really started listening to Revocation. And, um, yeah, a lot of these albums got me through some of the hardest times. There were a lot of breakups, you know, and of course, you know, there was other music like rap started becoming something that I would listen to, like Juice World and XXX Temptation, as you know, they were kind of that moody sort of stuff. I also started listening to Nine Inch Nails more, but. Primarily, it was death metal, metalcore, and deathcore. And I remember finding the band Killswitch Engage shortly after I broke up with that girl. And, um, yeah, it really, well, actually, I didn't find them. I would listen to them a lot. Especially the album. If I can find it. There it is. Especially this album. The End of Heartache. And, um... Yeah, if you can't tell... <laughs> I have a lot of fucking metalcore and deathcore in my life. And, um... You know, a lot of my emotions went into listening to those albums as I felt alone and um whatnot so like i said not really wanting to get too much into my trauma um that happened and some people might say it's bullshit but i don't really give a shit um i i know i have friends out there who actually give a shit about me and will sit down and listen um you know, and, uh, that said, I was also watching a lot of the Diggy Dine show, which is where I found a lot of fucking bands, like Suicide Silence, Whitechapel, um, you know, I think that's how I started listening to more Infant Annihilator, but then I found a band called Born of Osiris, and for about three months straight, I listened to The New Rain. <laughs> and then I listened to, like, A Higher a higher Place, or whatever that album was, in, like, 09. And I just listened to their whole discography, and I would just repeatedly listen and listen and listen and my dad was like, what the hell? But, um, yeah, a lot of death metal, deathcore, grindcore, metalcore. All, all, a lot of the extreme metal I listened to actually helped a lot more as it kind of gave me an escape from reality is what I'm trying to say. And, um... I don't, I didn't mean to, uh, you know, get too deep into that trauma, which I don't think I really did. I just kind of wanted to briefly explain what happened. Um, the people that I trust, I will obviously talk to about it if, you know, if something's bug bugging me, but, um, that said, um, thank you all for watching. Thank you for subscribing, and as always, keep it grim.